vocals, but I talk to myself. That's how I, that's my creative process. I walk around and talk to myself and get it in my mind and then that's how I deliver it. So as I was outside panicking, walking around, pacing, creating a new set to go do, Nick came in and probably just thought I was some crazy nigga outside talking to myself. But when I went up and did my set, I killed. And when I came off, he said, hey man, did you just did you just outside making that shit up? I was like, yeah. He said, man, I'm around some of the best in the game. They can't do what you just did. Keep working. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Man, like, it, it, you, you been on everything from Wildin' Out, you know, BET, you on TV a lot now. How was it when you first seen yourself on TV and just coming into that whole realm? Man, it was I was nervous because <laughs> wilding out, you might not see yourself. <laughs> That's what Carlos said. Yeah, he you said might not tough. see you yourself. Not like Corey Holcomb, salute to the OG Corey, man. Corey Holcomb was uh, the veteran when I was a rookie. And he was somebody, you know, they do these things called workshops when we do Wildin' Out where they bring you in like a week before we shoot and they workshop the games because we always coming up with new games and getting people familiar. And the first day of workshops, Corey Holcomb walked in and it was just like, I was like, oh shit, that's Corey because I'm a fan, you know Real what I mean? Talk. I was a fan, but now like he's a peer. I'm in the same space. It, it, I'm like, man, I got to go with him. Yeah. Like, this the person. This my gauge. I got to make him laugh. And uh, I went in him at the Wild Style, and I lost. Uh, I can't even remember what, it, what he said to me, but it was hilarious. But afterwards, he pulled me to the side and gave me the best advice, especially in the space of Wild and Out that I've ever gotten. He said, man, hey, man, I can tell you got something. I can tell you special. Find you mm -hmm. something to do in this motherfucker. Or else you're going to be one of them niggas they see at the beginning clapping. And they ain't gonna never see you again. Mm, wow. So that first episode, like we, my our first season, we came in season five. It's only four people left from that season, my original season that's still on the show. Myself, Carlos, Emmanuel, and Conceited. It's only four of us. When you say Carlos, man, Carlos be always. I asked him last time about Nick Cannon. How much of y'all learned from him? I know I get a good answer from you, but he shut me down in here. What's one thing that Nick uh, Cannon uh, uh, have advised you on that sticks out to what, you? What make you think Nick be giving me advice? No, because it, it's a friend. If it's a friend, y'all told kid, you we was friends. You ain't like the nigga? I didn't say it. Damn. Like it, Nick, did I say it's that? It's on Boss Talk. You yeah. know, I'm going to put hey. a picture side by side. No, but what make you, nigga said what this. make you think that I Nick would give me some advice? Because you and this nigga done did so much together on Wild Now. What have we done? Oh, Wild Now, y'all, that's a movement, man. So we, he what never, have we done he that never, made you think that he never, y'all never been in the room. He's like, me and you was together there. I'm like, man, you know, his was totally different. But what did you, from that show and Nick Cannon, just what some jewels that he done gave you that you can, you know, grow to live by or, or say, man, I can do something with this. See, you a messy ass nigga. You knew <laughs> not to ass lose that shit. I did did you know. did that? Yes, you did, uh, nigga. Did I know. Yes, you I did. I did. did. No, nah, y'all married. Y'all discussed this before I came. Know. I didn't know. know. I didn't watch it. So yeah. it you don't watch it. That's even more disrespectful, <laughs> nigga. That was then. Now I went back and watched it. Oh, day. okay. All right. I became a fan after that. I'm I like, did damn. not know about it. It tripped me. I'm like, nigga, really? Yeah, man. But that's out of love, man. Them niggas love each other, man. They just got the same type of personality in a lot of ways and I think that's what causes that a lot of the, the back and forth that they do but um, for me you know I met Nick prior to getting on the show Okay, mm -hmm. uh, my homegirl Dolly was his assistant you know what I mean at the time and he was doing a show called The Fresh Faces of Comedy Okay, and um, my myself and my guy b Dot, who I was speaking about she invited us and he invited us up to do this Fresh Faces of Comedy show. So uh, this was like two years before Wild and Out came back. It was like 2010. And I went up and I went, it was at Gotham Comedy Club and this was my first time. I'd only been doing comedy for two years and I was, you know, wasn't really doing it. I was just doing it whenever I could do it. And uh, so this was the biggest show that I had ever done up until that point. And um, when I went in the comedy club, the dude who owned the club was like, yeah, you can't talk about this. You can't say the N-word. You can't. We're going to see if you're really funny. Now, at that time, that's what I thought I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So my creative process is a little different. I don't write stuff down. Like, I'll jot down ideas in my notes, but I talk to myself. That's how I, that's my creative process. I walk around and talk to myself and get it in my mind, and then that's how I deliver it. So as I was outside panicking, walking around, pacing, creating a new set to go do. Nick came in and probably just thought I was some crazy nigga outside talking to myself. But when I went up and did my set, I killed. And when I came off, he said, hey man, did you just, you just outside making that shit up? I was like, yeah. He said, man, I'm around some of the best in the game. They can't do what you just did, keep working. So the very next day, he invited me out to come to uh, Six Flags with him. Now mind you, at this time, I'm just, 
a fly on the wall for real. I'm nobody in the sense of you know who I'm with, especially because mm -hmm. Nick. That's the thing about Nick. Nick had been famous since the, the '90s, damn near. So I'm just watching. I'm observing. You know what I mean? And at this point, this was the highest level of fame I had ever been that close to. So I'm just observing what it looks like to be at that level of fame and just watching how he moved. I remember we go to get on the roller coaster and people was going crazy. They hanging over the rails, the lady on the little thing that you announced that the roller coaster taking off, don't hang over the rails, please. And I'm just looking like, man, could I live like this? Wow. Is this the way that I want my life to be? Because if I become successful, this is what it'll look like. And at that point I was like, yeah, I can I can deal with it. So just watching him operate in his in his element is one of the biggest Jews that I've gotten. Seeing how he conducted himself in a space that I had no familiarity with, like I didn't know anything about this type of lifestyle. I knew I'd seen it from the outside, but this was the closest that I had been to it. But seeing how he conducted himself in that space gave me one of the biggest Jews of how to conduct myself at this time, where we've gotten to the point where. It, can be pandemonium when I show up somewhere. Well, is it mm -hmm. is it the same like like now? I know you guys have grown over the years. It, do you guys still have a relationship now where y'all may talk or go somewhere together, or is it just? No, nah, I mean you know we are busy. You know what I'm saying. So, but if it's if we ever in the same place City, or yeah. if I ever reached out, it, yeah, you know what I mean. He'll pick up the phone and holler at me. You know, that's, and if he don't pick up the phone, he'll call me back. And that's and that's with all of us. You know what I'm that's saying. With everybody. That's with all busy. of us, and that's why I commend him because he doesn't have to do that. But the thing that I give Nick the most credit for of all the things that he has done for everybody is the fact that most people who are in his position put you on but then they put you on and stand back and watch what you see do. what you do with it they don't stand beside Side you, you. Yeah. and let you utilize the fame that he's built mm -hmm. to build yours mm -hmm. yeah. that's something that Nick did like from the time that we got on that show we gonna do that dance do that dance Kevin Hart came to the show dressed in church pants his life has always been a linchpin for what the show is about no matter what stage he's in and now everybody talking about how many kids he got back in the day it was Mariah when he started wearing the turbans it was that whatever it was he allowed us to build our fame off of what he had going on to now when we show up people are talking about Chico Bean in the same way that they talk about Nick Cannon oh like I couldn't wait to get here to talk about your braids or you know I couldn't wait to get here to see you and Carlos go old school so I understand that we were nobodies when we came. He was already who he was. So for him not to just say wildin' out, Nick Cannon presents, and then just present us and let us figure it out and stand beside us the entire time, that's something that you don't see most it, people it, do. When they were gonna close the show, when they did stop the show, they kinda stopped everything, and you guys were loyal to the point. How did y'all come back together when it was time to start back up again? I mean, it's a family environment, you know what I mean? It's like, it's comedy camp for us. You know, it's like we get to go to camp, because it's only three weeks out of the year you know what i mean and we do this it, it, however many times we do it you go in for three weeks and after that you go back to doing whatever you was doing out so, of the whole year out of the whole year yeah it's only i mean if we shoot twice it'll be six weeks mm. but that's the only time that we see each other in close proximity like that right. so it was easy to come we were excited to be back you know doing it and then it was during the pandemic so yeah. we were really like mm -hmm. you know excited about being able to see how we can make this thing work in an environment that nobody, nobody was familiar with yeah, yeah, and it was right after my mother passed away wow. so it was you know just a different environment completely but you know we we built that together you know what i'm saying and nick always gives us credit for what we've done publicly That's especially awesome. he always gives us credit for the work that we put in to make the show what it is you know what i'm saying and um you know a lot of the politics don't come from him you know a lot yeah. of that it, if it was him then the show wouldn't have never got stopped there's a lot of corporate shit that yeah, goes yeah. on that a lot of people don't see that behind the scenes and a lot of people that three weeks that's their whole year so they're going to do everything that they can to be as profound as possible in their job which can include making yours difficult just to make sure that they keep theirs when they come back you know what i mean yeah. if we come back so i just think that a lot of the you know the the shit that you see in front of the camera is because of the family element because without that we wouldn't be able to make that magic happen like we had if we didn't love it the way that we do that makes sense yeah we on boss talk 101 101 yeah we gonna talk